Size does matter. Reflecting our attitudes and knowledge about non-human animals in urban Hong Kong is a one-year project supported by the HAU Interdisciplinary Knowledge Exchange Project Fund. This interdisciplinary project involves two sociologists, Dr. Tommy C and Dr. Kamen Tong, and an ecologist, Dr. Renard Gennard, working together to inform and inspire local primary and secondary school students and the general public to explore the diverse yet hidden relationships with other non-human animals biologically, geographically, and socioculturally in an urban society like Hong Kong. This dialogue between biology and sociology aims to generate additional insights for understanding human behavior, the lives of non-human animals, and the interactions of humans and other animals in our daily lives. This project had a particular emphasis on small organisms, such as insects and arachnids, that are being ignored by the general public or are often perceived as pests or nuisances. Since September 2016, we have conducted a series of activities including focus group interview with animal concern groups, Dr. Jane Goodall's public lecture in HKU, and interactive workshops with primary and secondary school students. On the 24th of September 2016, we organized a focus group interview with representatives from a wide array of animal concern groups in Hong Kong, including the Boa Concern Group, Lentau Buffaloes Group, Dolphins Family, Scottish Fall Sickness Concern Group, Citizens for Animals, Hong Kong Dolphins Conservation Society, Animal Earth, and Non-Profit Making Veterinary Services Society Limited. Through conducting this focus group interview, we would like to facilitate dialogues and discussions of different animal concern groups in Hong Kong. On the 11th of November 2016, we invited Dr. Jane Goodall, a worldwide renowned ethologist, conservationist, and a United Nations Messenger of Peace, to give an exclusive public talk titled Reasons for Hope at HEU Lokio Hall. Dr. Goodall brought us into the world of the Gong Bay chimpanzees and the work of the Jane Goodall Institute, from her early observations and experiences to the latest news and stories from the field. There were more than 600 people joining the talk, and more than 1,200 people have watched the live broadcast of the talk on YouTube. Through National Geographic's online platforms, the event's news has been disseminated to over 1.67 million audiences worldwide. Before the talk, we invited Dr. Goodall and the team from the Jane Goodall Institute Hong Kong to join an exclusive symposium with experts from our Interdisciplinary Knowledge Exchange Project team, as well as those from the School of Biological Sciences and the Common Core Curriculum. We have organized workshops to six different schools in Hong Kong, including Rosebud Primary School, French International School, the Independent Schools Foundation Academy, St. Joan of Arc Secondary School, Our Ladies College, and Good Hope School. Animal Go is an interactive game that allows participants to engage with biodiversity knowledge and its different constituents and roles within the ecosystem. First, we asked the participants to name their groups with an animal and they've named themselves to quite diverse groups of animals, such as falcon, sloth, old cats, and little puppy. Secondly, they were asked to list out as many animals as possible within 30 seconds. Most teams were able to list 10 to 20 animals with an average of 14 animals. Most of them were mammals, followed by birds, insects, and reptiles. After that, they had to evaluate the answers and list 10 animals that are as diverse as possible in terms of biological diversity. This time, most groups could list animals from almost every group of vertebrates and even some groups of invertebrates. However, vertebrates were still the majority. Thirdly, the participants were asked to identify and categorize the animals given to them. Then, the participants were asked to rank the animal groups according to the number of species within the groups. Most of the participants were able to tell the insects is the most popular the group of animals on Earth, but they lacked any general idea about other groups of animals. Two-thirds of the teams put mammals as the top five groups, which actually has the least number of species. Finally, participants had to rank the animals given according to their importance. Half of the teams ranked humans as the most important animals. So our first animal, animal is the human. human. Because obviously. Because it's a human. And because we're human, so yeah. pretty self-explanatory. So it had the most impact on, the on nature. The most impact on the environment. Yeah, the most impact on the environment. It is the 
only animal on Earth which know how to produce machinery. Yes, we can study the uh, the species and then uh, we can help to conserve those and uh, species that are endangered. Interestingly, four of the seven teams ranked humans as the least important. Because it destroys uh, everything that um, in nature. <laughs> Two teams didn't rank animals as instructed. We think that the most important animal is all of them because all animals should be equal. And we think that actually all are equally important because they play different roles. After the game, the participants visited the School of Biological Sciences Museum. There are thousands of specimens from Hong Kong and abroad. The participants were very excited when they walked around the museum. All of them were captivated by Dr. Gunnar's explanation of the collections. Next is a field trip. The participants went outdoor to observe and collect various insects and other arthropods. They also had a chance to touch the organisms they came across, which they might have never noticed before. The field trip was the participants' favorite activity among all. After the field trip are the sociological games Chicken Attack and Finding Animals. Chicken Attack provides participants an opportunity to imagine the lives of battery K chicken in a factory farm in order to discuss humans' food production process and consumption pattern. Most participants, especially the younger ones, were totally unaware of our food production process. After the game, quite a number of participants mentioned that they would like to eat less meat or try finding meats that are produced in a more animal-friendly environment. Finding animals provides participants an opportunity to search for animals in different pictures that are closely identical to the context in their daily lives. Through playing the game, participants realize that non-human animals are not invisible in the urban context. They are indeed coexisting with us everywhere, even in our homes. The last program is the macro photography session, during which participants can see high-resolution macro pictures of the organisms collected during the field excursion and observe the diversity of shapes, colors, and discuss some of their ecological functions, ultimately paying more respect to those animals which are often regarded as insignificant due to their small size. Non-human animals are always around us, even though we may not always be aware of them. We hope that through organizing this knowledge exchange project, young people can be more aware of issues related to non-human animals and critically rethink about the attitudes towards and multivisited relationships with them.